I absolutely love Clubhouse because I was able to connect with people. I think for the longest time I was doing what I'm doing, thinking that I was kind of still the only one out there, uh, not only just being gay, but being a gay activist, trying to bring change to the community and help people. And being part of Clubhouse, I've just fallen into so many rooms and I'm like, there are people like me everywhere in the world. And like that created such a strong bond and it's definitely made me, I mean, my positive talks on Instagram. I know. Uh, a lot of those are yes. people as well, so. And I appreciate you for bringing me on to, to tell my TCID story and talk about TCID. But one of the things that I loved being on there is it's like, it's all about like positive conversations. And although there's moments where like you have to learn from maybe a, negative or some kind of event but there is a lot of about just learning and uh uplifting and focusing on the joys especially in our community as well because I also think that sometimes we focus a lot on negatives and stuff that go on because we're fighting for so much and so many rights and just like see us but like I also like to celebrate those positive conversations too so and you just hit a hundred episodes on Instagram that's so crazy you're like really you're like so what I didn't say earlier is like you actually are like what we an influencer if you will on Instagram YouTube Clubhouse <laughs> are you I'm assuming on TikTok I'm not I'm not like focused uh, yeah so no. <laughs> I've been on other people's TikToks. So I, I'm still, now that I moved somewhere where I actually have internet and cell phone connectivity, uh, TikTok is something I am looking into. Uh, I think I'm thinking too much about it when it comes to, oh my gosh, what is going to be my first video I ever post yeah, on there? Yeah, yeah. But I do yeah. have a drumming culture TikTok page. It just doesn't have a video on it yet. That's hilarious. I love it. What are you thinking kind of so far for the first one? I honestly like I I'm not a trend follower I don't like the whole seeing someone else do it and try to do it myself so yeah, I yeah. everything I do I try to make it whatever feels right to me so I've been just kind of thinking about taking stuff that the LGBT community is facing and kind of finding a message of healing around that specific thing mm -hmm. and then just playing like some music around it and just making it a very like inspiring platform. Uh, I, I thought about making like a silly, funny TikTok, but it doesn't really go in brand with anything else I do. Yeah, uh, so yeah. I'll just do the funny ones on other <laughs> pages. There you go. Are you a dancer? Have you tried any of the TikTok no. dances? <laughs> <laughs> any type of dancing would be a comedy thing for me. <laughs> I suffer from white boy dance moves. Oh, gosh, so no. It's bad. <laughs> I always like to tell my friends, I think that dancing is about just as long as you do it confidently. Because, like, I feel like you see people, I, at least <laughs> I've seen people that I'm like, you know, that's a move that works for you. <laughs> see, I'm the type of person that when I go out to the clubs, like, I see someone else dancing, I'm like, that's like an amazing dance and then yeah. I think that I'm doing it yeah and then yeah. I see someone that's recorded me doing it and I'm like oh my god don't <laughs> ever do that again <laughs> no that's hilarious I love it so tell us how you well tell us a little bit about you tell us a I'd love to find out um I mean it's an easy question like you're a coach and you coach people in the LGBTQIA community it would be easy for me to ask you like why but I can obviously assume why you know but what is it that really makes it important for you if you if that makes sense I think it was just seeing how much it helped me in real life uh once I kind of connected the dots and really found self-love for myself and self-worth within uh, my journey in life. It really opened my eyes to how much trauma and pain is in our community and getting to that space where like, I am proud of who I am in every aspect because I've struggled with, of course, my religious background, that being part of uh, my gay identity and trying to make all of that work when the world was telling me you can't be both. Yeah. Uh, but I felt like 
both of those were part of me and I was being told by both communities that I couldn't be both. And I stopped asking the world uh, for permission to be what I felt like was right. And I see so much pain in the LGBT community and the world in general, uh, where people are really struggling to just be themselves. And it, when you are in a position where you can see past other people's trauma, which sometimes come across as they're just really hateful and mean, uh, and it's because they're dealing with so many things on their own. And when you get past that and can see through those things in people, all you wanna do is help more people get to where you are because you don't say hateful things to other people when you love yourself and you're happy in mm-hmm. life. Because once you're there, you know how magical that is and you wanna share it. So anytime I see pain being like, thrown out into the world I'm just like I want to help you just let me help you because you deserve to feel the way that I'm feeling right now and yeah not to say that like my life is perfect I I come across challenges all the time but it's definitely a lot easier now uh, when I have self-love and when challenging things come up I know my core values yeah I just want more people to feel that way in life facts no without a doubt I I'm a firm believer in like the more you love yourself, like you're saying, the more you're able. Because like, there was a moment in like my life where I definitely felt like I was kind of like, I don't know, where like I felt like I needed to prove my worth to so many people around me rather than like believing it in myself, and I was a lot more. I would say bitchy back then than I ever. <laughs> and now more people, not to say I don't have my bitchy moment, but I would say more <laughs> people <laughs> would perceive me as just super like nice and kind and warm. And that's usually how I am normally, but it's just like now that I don't like I just love who I am naturally. It's something that I don't feel like I have to prove to other people. You know what I mean? Um, and so I love hearing that because it's so true and I would love to kind of get your take and conversation on how it you got to a place of like accepting like your religion side, your religious side, and you know being queer as well. Because I do think that that is a big conversation in our community. That like, although like as queer people we do fight for so many like rights and acceptance and stuff there is some things that we in our own community still kind of push back on. And I do believe that like, there is a disbelief sometime on like, how can you be religious and be gay or how, and queer? And like, because it's, there is some kind of, there's been conflict in that regard <laughs> for a lot of people, but how did that support you? How did you get to that place? I, I think that it was just, healing the trauma that I had from everything. And I think that when I was able to heal that, which there's a lot of different things you have to do to heal trauma. And one of those things was removing bad people out of my life. So Mm -hmm. there are definitely only so many spots in our life that we can put people in, uh, in the power of influence. And I had a lot of people who were telling me, you can't do this. You can't be this. You can't do what you're saying that you want to do. And within that, I felt like I was constantly angry and battling and trying to prove myself like you were saying. And I also, when I tried to cut people out of my life, I also felt like I was a bad person for doing that. And I realized that you don't have to fight that. Like you don't have to be in that position. And I started removing those types of people out of my life, whether it was an LGBTQIA plus friend or a Christian friend or just people in my life in general that just weren't feeding the person that I wanted to be. Mm. And when I slowly started pulling those out and then through life, when something triggered me, I took note of that. So when someone said like, you can't be gay and Christian and it like triggered me, I was like, why? Why does that trigger me? And then it was I didn't believe, I also didn't believe you could be both. And I felt like I was seeking out someone that told me I could, when at the end of the day, 
if it's who I am, then it's possible because I am me <laughs> and I am both. Fact. So I don't need validation Fact. from anyone. It's Fact. I, that is me. You don't get to tell me I don't get to be me. And every single time, like I was triggered, I realized that that was a part of me that I needed to ask more questions about and yeah. heal. Yeah. And now I'm able to go into churches. And when I do hear the opposing thoughts that, uh, the LGBT people aren't welcome. Uh, it doesn't trigger me anymore. Uh, now I can have conversations around that without me being triggered. And it's so much easier to have those conversations without your emotions uh, balling up and exploding. Uh, now I can just be like, and why do you feel that way? Do you think maybe uh, it's something that's been passed down to you because that's what society is saying can and cannot happen? And I go into those spaces feeling a lot more strong in my beliefs. And I realize that the journey of self-acceptance uh, doesn't require anyone but yourself. Mm, uh, and I think more people need to stop asking permission. I remember like asking people like, do you think I'm attractive? And that's so subjective to each person that's looking at you. And I shouldn't feel attractive based upon a poll of people that say yes or no. And it really took me standing in front of a mirror and finding things that I loved about myself and the things that I didn't love, finding reasons to love those parts of myself as well. Yeah. It's just like a lot of the trauma that's out in the world, the hatred that goes out is because people haven't taken that time to love themselves. Yeah. I feel like people who hate themselves are the ones that throw more hate out into the world because it's their pain that they're trying to remove, but they're doing it in a way that's just causing more trauma and their hateful words will cause trauma in someone else's life that now yeah. those people have to heal. So anytime I go into a space, I'm like, are you mentally ready to take on other people's trauma without releasing it back towards them? Because I don't want to ever be the cause of creating a trauma that could take people their entire lifetime to heal from facts yeah so a question for you is i know like you i actually went back and watched some of your older like youtube videos and stuff like that and i i love seeing your evolution from your videos but how does it feel like for you do you go back and ever watch your own videos and stuff like that I, I've definitely seen a couple of my older ones, mainly because I know that times are changing. And when it comes to your vocabulary, when you're speaking about LGBT, mm -hmm. um, when you're speaking about uh, important uh, movements that are happening, I think that it's important to realize that certain things were filmed before certain things were uh, spoken of in the way that they are now. So I definitely try to go back and check those but it's, it's always so funny for me because like Facebook and all those Snapchat have like the reminders of seven years ago. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And where I am today, I feel like I've come so far, but sometimes the messages that I was putting out into the world, like, I'm like, wow, like he, that little kid was like killing it back then. Like that message was beautiful. Oh, and sometimes good. it's things that I need to hear now mm. and be reminded of. Wow. And I, I always think back, I'm like, oh, maybe something back then, my views have changed now. But I think that all of my messages have always come like from my, my heart. So I feel like God and whatever other uh, energy that guided me to create that content really did put words in my mouth that would carry on and not need to be taken down later. Yeah. But it, it's definitely weird because I think when I first, like the channel you're probably looking at, when I created those videos, I think I was still in the stage in my life where I was looking for people to affirm what I was saying instead of believing in it fully myself. Mm. Like I was like, this is what should be right. Like this is what the world should be. Uh, this is how people should be thinking. Uh, but I wasn't 100% confident in that message. Whereas now, of course, like 
you hear like you get feedback from people sometimes it's a lot more critical than i think it should be but like yeah, within that, that <laughs> so like my, my energy in those videos i feel like i was very like i'd sit there i had like i was slouched over and i never really like looked directly at the camera and i didn't have like the confidence that what i was doing would ever turn into something uh whereas now i feel like I have a message and I need the world to hear it. And I've taken everything that I've learned along the journey to continue to make content that I think will change the world for the better. Yeah. So I've definitely gained more confidence and I'm sure five years from now, when I'm looking back on what I'm making now, I'll be like, wow, I've grown so much. I mean, I experienced that with the, like, I listened to some episode, like, there's still episodes now that are out there that I'm like, I hope people don't listen to that episode. And then people <laughs> be like, oh, I listened to that episode. And I'm like, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> but then, but people, I'm sure just like you, though, people will be like, oh, no, I loved it. And, and like, have, I mean, people will always, there's, the haters are out there. That's just for any video that gets hugely seen, there's gonna be somebody that you piss off. <laughs> I was just talking about that with somebody. It's just like, man. Um, but w- is there a video in particular that you've seen recently that you were like, wow, I really needed to hear that again? <laughs> there, There's probably a lot of videos that just kind of seeing the, like, talk. I would say the dream job one that I was talking about, Mm. like what I said was my dream job then. It's weird because like, I have always kind of done stuff like this, uh, whether it was more private, uh, but video has always been something that I do to let the world know what I feel because it's easier than standing in front of a large crowd. (laughs) (laughs) It was uh, interesting because like, that's funny. There were there was times after that video that I made where I gave up on that idea. Uh, and now it's funny because I've had people that watch my videos. And then as I'm talking about the fears that I'm walking through right now, people take the advice that I give in those videos and slap it back to me and be like, Well, a wise YouTuber once said, and I'm like, oh my God, yeah, I yeah. said that. But <laughs> the, it's interesting because like even listening to like my coming out video which that was a second edition of my coming out because I deleted my first YouTube channel uh, because of crazy stalkers and all that fun stuff Mm, but even that video like I wish I could run back in time and like give that kid um, some props for what he was doing but also uh let him know that that video was going to do a lot more for more people as well as now that I'm like 32 years old re-watching that because that video I think is like mm, seven years old now uh just to let because I didn't believe in myself at that time mm. so to go back and let that person know like what you just did was phenomenal what you shared means so much to me now as well as other people just because it was coming from a pure spot. Um, And I don't think any of my content I ever do because I want it to go viral and tons of people to watch it. I've always done it because I want at least one person to hear it that's going to shift their mind to something better. Yes, yeah. All of your years of experience, what are some like common tools that you would like to like share with, or can you share with us or anybody listening that really supported you in one, like loving yourself? Cause I think that's something that anybody can take away, but also in just like taking ownership of your voice and like your message and spreading that. Cause I think that's also super important. I think that something that I learned here when it comes to creating content is stop trying to create content for other people Mm. and create it for the you that you know 
like needed a message. So like mm. when, when you were 15, what message did you need to hear and create it? Because there are going to be people on the internet that need that same message. And don't be afraid to say something that you think might be contradictory uh, because if it was something that you needed to hear, then that message is valid. And I think that too often we, like I've spoken to a lot of people where you know, like, well, I really want to do this, but I'm afraid that my audience might not like, and I'm like, then they're not your audience. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh my like, God. Stop, that's true. Stop being afraid of creating content that's true to you because you think someone won't want to hear it because you are your, like you are your greatest audience member there. And if you create it and it touches your heart, then it's the right thing to say. And just know that content that you create now, your opinions will grow and change. And yes, people might see that old video and that's the first one they see of you. Uh, and they might make a judgment of you, but don't delete it. Keep it like you can private a video, but don't delete it because my older stuff like definitely has come back around to inspire me. And I mean, I have grown. Like for me, the biggest thing that I noticed is when I found self-love, when I got to where I am now, I now see bigger pictures and other people's struggles Whereas before I only could really see mine. Mm -hmm. So I very much in the beginning focused on my struggle as an LGBT person. I didn't see that within our own community, there were people that were still struggling being gay, but also struggling with racism, also struggling with all the different identities that people are oppressing people by. And it's, it's definitely crazy that that was something I never saw before uh, because I, one of the videos that I watched that was older, um, it was labeled racism. And I was speaking from my truth at that time. And it was crazy what I understood to be racism at the age of like 22 versus what I understand racism to be at 32. and because I made a comment that made me cringe now where I, it was actually here in Richmond. I was on my way to Bush Gardens and we stopped at an IHOP and I know that to get breakfast. Great. And we walked into a restaurant and it was in a part of town where we were definitely the minority uh, walking into this place. And I made the comment of, I now kind of know a little bit of how it feels to like, be in a situation where you are the only black person in a crowd. And now that I was older, I look back on that and I'm like, you knew nothing. <laughs> because even in today's world, being the only white person in the room, you still have the most privilege, especially being a white male. I still had the most privilege standing there in that space. And I cringed at how I thought I understood uh, but I also, I've come a long way and I've opened my ears, uh, because with privilege comes like blinders and earplugs that come with it. And it's so important for people to realize that any type of privilege, we don't, uh, see, uh, the struggles of other people that don't have that privilege. Like when it comes to people who suffer from disabilities, I wasn't aware of how many places weren't handicap accessible until I became friends with someone who every vacation they had to do extra planning because wow. they didn't want to be in an area where they couldn't go to restaurants because they all had steps, uh, wow. nothing but hills and no elevators. And wow. it, it blew my mind that there are so many different things that I am still having to learn uh, because within every privilege comes that blinder that makes you think that your struggles are the worst, not realizing that there's still so much change that needs to happen for a lot of other people. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I'm like, wow, I, even in that short example, I'm like, that is something that 
somebody who's maybe in a wheelchair or just has some kind of disability would have to really think more about that I've never really had to think about. And that's, I wouldn't say never. I, well, now I want to watch what I'll say because I was in a wheelchair for a year at one point when I was younger because I dislocated my hip. But like, even at that level, I was like, had somebody taking care of me or pushing me around and stuff like that. So it was like, I, I wasn't thinking about those things. Um, um, but well, thank you for sharing that. And thank you for being vulnerable even about, or just in sharing about your own like experience uh, with your first video compared to another video or just seeing that video back. Um, Cause I can imagine that a lot of people would have a lot to say about that, you know what I mean? And I think that's something that's really important. And I've talked about even in my own podcast that even just as somebody who is part of that minority group, like I still have so much to learn and still so much to um, uh, just evolve. And especially nowadays, like um, I had a friend actually, and we were talking about pronouns and I, he was like, well, it's just something that I have to get used to. And I was like, we all do. Like, it's not anybody who's not a part of that community has lived a life that never had to think about it, you know? And so I've even made mistakes and flubbed up and pronounced. And it's like about making that cognizant, like, oops, I need to be cognizant of that, you know? Um, but nobody's perfect. We're all here. And I think we have to also give each other space to learn y'all. We can't just like somebody makes a mistake and then attack them. And then there's no room to like, open up your closet. Let's see what's in there. You know, yeah. everybody's I got mean, something. I think that I learned that I needed to really let my defenses down mm -hmm. because even when you mess up and you trigger someone, like it is their right to be upset about it. Of course. Uh, and it is their right to point it out. Yes, it's not always the most uh, ideal way. Uh, there's definitely been some really uncomfortable uh, moments for me when I've slipped up and messed up, but I've really learned to let my defenses go. And I think that once you are in a position where you realize that, you can always learn more. Uh, you you allow other people to point out your flaws and you yeah. don't feel judged. You are thankful that there are people out there who are willing to point that out <laughs> so that you can grow. Because personally, like, I appreciate it because I know that the person pointing it out to me probably was triggered, but they were strong enough to point it out to me. Whereas I might make that same mistake later and trigger someone that it could push them past uh, the point of no return. And I would never want to be that person. So I try to create spaces with everyone in my life that are opening and welcoming to the, that critical conversation of, hey, like what you just said, like that, that triggers me and probably will trigger a lot more people that are in this same community or in the same situation. I always try to create a space so that people aren't afraid to help me grow because sometimes you put out so much judgment and so much uh, power in a space that people are scared to point out, hey, like what you just said is not okay. Yeah. And I never want to be in a position where someone feels like they can't tell me, hey, you messed up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I totally get that. And I think... It remind, have you ever read the book, The Four Agreements? I'm not. Oh my goodness, you should. It's a very short read. It's like, don't quote me, but like 60 pages. It's like, no. Okay. Yeah. And it's like about like the four basic agreements of life. And one of them is to not take, take, not to take things personal. And the more all of us can practice not taking things personal, because just like you said, it's that person's right to be upset. It's that person's right to correct you and all those things. Um, it's that person's right to be a hater. You know, we can go on in different things. And um, the more as people we can learn to take, not take things personally, we can hear those feedbacks, we can hear those critiques and just 
take what works and take what doesn't work, you know, from it and not be like, so like you said, defensive. And cause I think that's also, either way, if you ever get a chance to look it up or anything like that, anybody watching the four agreements, really, really good. Actually talking about it, I'm like, I should reread it. Cause sometimes <laughs> like y'all don't like the logo. What? <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with y'all? <laughs> it's like, um, is there anything so far I haven't asked that you wish I had? Uh, I think that when it comes to conversations like this, it just needs to be happening on so many different levels. And people need to realize that uncomfortable is different than feeling unsafe. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of times we don't have uncomfortable conversations because uh, it's uncomfortable, uh, but we have to have them and also realize that there's a difference between me stepping into a world with privilege and having an uncomfortable conversation versus someone else stepping out into the world and feeling unsafe because those uncomfortable conversations weren't had. Mm. And I think that that's important for people listening and for people out in the world to realize that we need those uncomfortable situations to happen to make us better. And everyone can do it. Every single person on this planet has the power you don't have to have thousands of followers. Uh, everyone that's where they are today started somewhere. And you just have to learn that everything that you do uh, has an effect on the world. So be aware, like if you hear someone say something homophobic, racist, transphobic, sexist, uh, xenophobic, any of those things, even though there might not be someone in the room that that comment could impact, you making a statement that that's not right to say will have an impact later because next time that person says something or thinks something like that, they will have that second thought of this, I've been called out for this, this isn't right. And it might not stop it instantly, but we all need to continue to plant seeds. Uh, there's no such thing as too old to learn that racist is bad. Uh, I hate the excuse that people give their grandparents and people in older generations like, oh, well, uh, they, they, they just don't know any better. They are alive and well and are part of the world today and see the same news that I see. They don't get to go around uh, with their prehistoric uh, views of the world because we're in 2021 now. And <laughs> that they don't have that excuse. That's not a valid excuse. That. So <laughs> realize that that's not okay to say. Don't say, well, my mom said something like this, but she's old, so I'm not gonna correct her. No, you have the power of influence because you're someone that person loves or respects. Ah. Fix it. Every one of us has that uh, job to fix the world that is within our uh, personal bubble because if we don't, then it's not going to change. Yeah, without a doubt. Without a doubt. Um, so before we go, we ask everybody the same question. And it's, we've all heard the quote, be the change you wish to see. What's the change you wish to see? And how are you going to be at Drummond? Uh, the change that I would love to see is for every company, everything that exists in this world to be as diverse as the world that it serves. I think that that would be a true reflection of moving towards equality for everyone, because I think that there are so many people out there in the world that feel like their voices aren't represented in different places of the world. And I try to make sure that on my platform, all voices are heard. Uh, I try to make sure that when we're in a space and certain people are being spoke of, that that person's opinion is actually there to be represented uh, or the conversation shouldn't be had. Uh, every group that I've been a part of within the business that I've been a part of, like I've made sure that the right person is speaking in that space. Uh, it can't all be about your personal gain in life. Um, yes, it would be great for my platform to grow and be beautiful and for me to be able to speak for communities that are underserved. 
but it's also my within my power to give that space to someone that is actually deserving of that place to speak. So I think that that is definitely my goal. Uh, and just over, I mean, I've always had very diverse friends because I've, I love learning about people that are different than me. I think that it makes me a better person, but like I, I purposely put myself in positions where if I have a prejudiced thought, I have to resolve that. So how do I resolve it? Become friends with the people that I have that prejudice towards and dissolve those thoughts that come with the stereotypes and realize that those stereotypes are because we haven't had people in the right spaces to stand up for themselves and change that stereotype. So I just wanna be able to be a part of that change uh, and realize that everyone uh, is equal to each other. Like every story matters, every, um, every journey, even if people don't see it, like it matters, uh, listen to each other. I, I mean, there have been people that we have walked very different journeys and I've learned so much from them. And I think when we can all respect each other's differences instead of trying to enforce our beliefs on other people, uh, we will start to become a world that is actually uh, closer to what would be lovely is world peace, but like a place where everyone is celebrated on a stage and you don't feel like someone has more privilege than another. Yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> no, I love that. I love that. Well, thank you so much for being here with me today, Drummond. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I, yeah. I love conversations like this. 